It's Jacob and AJ. All right, we actually have three guests today. We've got Nathan West. Woo! The man. We've got, uh, who else? We've got this guy. Mr. Impact. His name is Nectar. We've got Nectar. And we've got, we got Kai over here. we got Kai. You're going to save? Okay, you're going to save it. Okay. Um, anyway, we only have two mics right now. Isaiah actually sent a 4chan interface that he isn't using. So we'll have that. That should get here later today, actually, which is kind of bad timing. But So just... Hello, uh, this is Nathaniel West, uh, minus the annual part. And uh, it's good to see you guys. I'm, I haven't seen you guys in about like three or four years. Yeah, it's been a minute. Because um, I've been mostly in Chicago the last five years. Mm -hmm. So I've been here like last few months. But then now you're over in Orlando area. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome everyone to episode five of the Chang Hoff pod. Um, let's get into some coffee real quick. What are we sipping on today? Bob? Oh, I didn't. Let me get the bag. You guys have a tradition of eating, eating, drinking like a certain brand of coffee. Yeah. Okay. So we try at the beginning of every uh, episode hey, you talk to, uh, mm -hmm. to try some coffee or try some tea, some beverage of some sort. And, um, just to give a, a little shout out right now, we have Was Here. AJ's showing it to the camera right now. Um, was Here. That's what I'm sipping in my cup right now. And uh, the special story about this coffee is, I guess, it's a local roaster. Mm -hmm. And they just came back from Japan. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. And I think with these beans. Am I, no, no, no. These am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, these. yeah, AJ knows the story of these particular beans better than I do. So They actually just, yeah, they were in Japan, so they have not been roasting. So these are old, but... Still great beans. But basically, yeah, just from a local roaster. So we like to give a little shout out to... Yeah, uh, great. Shout out to LPCX Cafe. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Take the first sip now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's good yeah. stuff. All right. So, Bud, AJ, I know you've been doing some photography recently, getting into it. Um, <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about uh, your... Your photography, you just started not too long ago. How's it going? How's your journey? Yeah, so I think it was actually last, it was less than a week ago. I'm realizing now it wasn't last, but less than a week ago. I don't remember what day. I was like, hey, Jacob, can I, can I borrow your camera? You want to get out your Rebel and kind of show? Because I knew you had a, a decent camera. So I was like, I've been going to all these concerts. I'm kind of thinking about, if I'm going to all of them, I might as well take pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm sure bands appreciate that, artists appreciate that. So look at that beautiful camera. Well, uh, um, is it a T something? T3, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so I asked if I could borrow it to shoot some concerts. I took it to the show on Crowbar this past Thursday. It was uh, Pet Lizard, Oceanic, Mad Woman, Cannibal Kids. Really enjoyed uh, all great sets. Um, and took a lot of pictures. Lots of them were bad, but some of them were cool. <laughs> so I got to send those over to the bands. And they were like, whoa, these are cool. So that was just a cool experience. Um mm -hmm. I went to another thing Friday. I didn't really get anything good there, but um, had just been talking to the photographers at these shows and kind of trying to see what kind of gear I need to shoot concerts. Because one of the biggest things is it's, it's very low light, usually when you see live music at night, and um, there's a lot of motion. So that's a bad combo for pretty much any camera. It's a moving <coughs> subject in low light is very difficult to shoot. Yeah. Um, so somebody, one of the photographers at one of those concerts was saying uh, he used to use a Sony A7R2 mm -hmm. and that that was really great in low light. And he's like, yeah, you know, starter camera, like $800. I was like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm not super interested in that. But so I've kind of been like, I tried to find cameras that were kind of similar to that, like had the low light capability, um, had adjustable lenses and stuff like that. And so I've just been kind of looking on Facebook Marketplace and... Uh, on Sunday, I went and met it up with a guy in Clearwater and bought a camera. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, you got to show the bag. The, the bag is sponsored. the bag is real nice. I think it's like a rite of passage to go to Facebook Marketplace to get a camera. Oh, absolutely. And, like, drive in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. <laughs> meet up with some random stranger. Yeah. <laughs> exchange money for goods. So yeah, nice little CBS sports bag mm -hmm. that that he got. And a beautiful camera, beautiful camera. Wow. Pull it out. What is it? This is a Canon EOS 
EOS R. A Canon nice. EOS R. So he was going to show that to the camera real quick. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It's quite a thick lens. Quite a thick lens. Oh, yeah. um, very nice camera. Very nice camera. Um, and he got an absolutely killer I how much I paid, but steal I did not for it. Pay close to what it's worth. Yeah. For he got a killer steal on it. So that's that's sick. And Nathan, you have a camera, right? Yeah. Did you bring um, one? Yeah. So it's not a digital one, but. That's even better. I started, I think I went to this boba shop and um, one of the cashiers, she was like, um, we got like closer and like we started talking about like cameras and stuff mm -hmm. and she's super into film photography. So I think she's the reason why um, I started getting into film photography in general and kind of like the same thing. It's like what kind of, what kind of starter lens or what start, starter camera can you get, you know? Um, and everyone kept pointing to like this one it's a manual um pentax k1000 oh wow beautiful um it's quite old but i got this um across the street from my own house oh nice. very weird still from facebook marketplace uh, nice as always but the lens i bought um from like this thrift store but it's like a m2 something but it's like a standard 50 millimeter lens and everything like that and then um, these ones came with it. This is a 135 millimeter, um, Takumar. And this one also came with it. It's like a zoom lens from oh, like 35 to 70. Nice, like nice. So I've been trying. Manual is a lot harder than like semi-automatic. I also have like a, um, a Sigma camera, which is very weird because Sigma is mainly known for their lenses mm -hmm. and not for their cameras, but it does work. I've used it for, um, I think on my Instagram, I have like photos of Mac Airs and everything like that. Um, I use that camera for that. Beautiful. It has like low lighting and stuff like that. Love um, film cameras. Yeah. yeah. Can we go see what's up with these dogs you hold on? Yeah. Absolutely. Those those picture qualities that you can get with with film cameras is just something that doesn't come out in digital. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know how to explain it. Maybe it's something about the graininess of the film or something, but there's just a depth yeah. to. <laughs> to film photography that just cannot be replicated by digital cameras. I think also like the, just the limitations of the frames that you have. Cause mm. like with, you know, phones and digital cameras, you can take as many photos as the space allows. Yeah. You know? But like with um, film cameras, you only have, you know, 28 frames, 36 frames and stuff like that. Yeah. You have to be very um, selective about what you're oh, shooting. Yeah. Show your, your stuff to the camera. Oh yeah. 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 Walk it over there. Show my camera to the camera. Show your camera to the camera. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah, we didn't even say anything about cameras. You just brought it. How yeah. funny. Yeah, well, I, at first I wanted to start with film, but I figured the turnaround time is just a lot faster with digital. Careful, don't fall in. Yeah, nice. beautiful little so Pentax So what is that, a camera. Pentax K1000? Yeah. And then what's the lens on it? Uh, I think it's an M2 camera. An M2 lens? lens? Yeah, but okay. it's a Japanese a japanese m2 lens yeah very nice wow. oh okay you had to get it i forgot i'm just so bad with terminology but i had to um buy like this thing off of amazon so that the lens could connect to the camera you had to get an adapter to connect the your japanese lens what is, is pentax is that pentax is japanese yeah so like oh it says asahi mm -hmm. pentax and then this one is just it's an asahi lens but um it's for an older model of the Pentax, so I had to like get an adapter for this um, version of it. But yeah, this one, you can tell that it's um, from Japan and not from, I think, Singapore and China because of the Asahi part. So, uh, oh, very nice. All right, Nathan, so how you been? How you been doing? Yeah. I, you said earlier in the uh, at the beginning that it's been a few years since um, we've all really like sat together and hung out and seen each other, so... Um, yeah. What are you doing with your life right now? I heard that you're a teacher. Yeah, I'm a middle school music teacher. Oh, that um, must be fun. Orlando. It is so fun. That must be fun. <laughs> I like to say um, that I'm low-key a veteran because it is a war zone every day, <laughs> every single day. This hey. is why I like to talk to teachers because they have the craziest stories, especially <laughs> with the younger kids. Yeah. So middle school music teacher. Mm -hmm. So do you teach all three grade it's it's sixth seventh and eighth grade right yeah so um i have about um i think it's almost 200 kids all by myself wow. which is 
almost illegal, but it's just <laughs> just under just uh, under two hundred. So I'm fine. <laughs> but yeah, I have to basically I have six six periods a day, um, with a planning period in third. And so three beginning classes for my sixth and seventh graders and then intermediate one advanced girls class and then like one class full of just boys. Um, and it's 40 something boys in one room. Oh my goodness. And middle school boys <laughs> at that. Yeah, they don't stink as much, but I think it's because I put them in first period. So they haven't mm. like had enough day <laughs> <laughs> to so, gather stench yeah. <laughs> and PE and whatnot. Yeah, but there is like one kid Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter what time of the day. He could be showering. And I'm sure the shower is like, why do you still stink? I don't know. <laughs> but he is foul. Shout out to that kid. That kid. No kid, no kid those names. Um, but yeah, I we just had MPA um for those in the audience. It's a music performance assessment. Mm -hmm. And basically you have like three judges, and there's a fourth judge who like comes and works with you after you perform. And you um, perform two songs. It could be band, orchestra, choir, but like for us, it's choir. Um, so we perform two pieces. The judges are like, you guys did great. Um, here are some things that you could possibly work on. And they also give you like a rating. So mm -hmm. superior being the best, excellent. Um, I think it's good, then fair. I think they got rid of poor. Just yeah, <laughs> So, uh, yeah. But... Yes. Many people, many parents probably weren't happy with the poor rating. Yeah. It's like, we got poor. Straight poors? <laughs> Straight poors across the board. At that point, just go for comments only. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I went for the first time um, as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've done it since I think my freshman year of high school. Yeah. Um, and then I went as an intern and I got to conduct during college my senior year. And we got superiors pretty much every single time there. Um, but then as I became a teacher, um, it was stressful, let me tell you. Just the preparation alone is just so much because you have to rely on the kids actually practicing. Yeah. And middle school kids do not practice. So, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you try your best with the time. And then the other factors that go into it is like you have to do your teacher duties. So uh, if there's testing going on, then you lose that class period. Mm. If there's like an event, um, we just had a pep rally for no reason. Um, our basketball team, we made it to the uh, championships, like the finals. Oh, cool. And we lost, but it was such an embarrassing, <laughs> <laughs> that pep rally was rough. But yeah, like pep rallies, I lost a period for that. And then um, testing. Um, and then there's some, <laughs> there's some kids who like show up and they're like sick. So all of those factors come into play. Um, and then not to mention getting the music. There's just so much. Um, Lots of variables. But yeah. Um, but we did really well. It was my first time. Um, and the kids' first time as well. Like, they were all, they're all they new to this. Mm -hmm. So they were a little bit nervous. But I tried to be as calm as possible. Even though when it comes to my own concerts, I'm not that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd be like, you guys just need to stay seated and don't talk. I need to rehearse. Um but this time around, I just said, you know, you got this. We've worked as much as we can. Um, just do your best and hope for the hope for the best, you know. Um, and they did really well. We got excellence across the board. Nice. Um, but sight reading, oh my god! So <laughs> <laughs> sight reading is so tough. Um, all you have to do is you have to do like a rhythm sight reading. So all you have to do is just like ta ta t t ta for sixteen measures, mm -hmm. and then. You have to do a sight singing one. So there's like two different versions of it. Um, but the rhythm one, not even five seconds in, I said, all right, open the book to the easiest one. Number one. Why are there kids opening to page nine in the middle of I'm like, oh, my goodness. We're doomed. Like, it's, you might as well just pack up. Can't um, even follow that simple instructions. <laughs> kid, five, uh, Ten seconds later, there was a kid who was like, is this rhythm – a quarter note or an eighth note? Is it ta or tt? And I was like, oh, you've been in my class for two years. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell if you, I, bro. If you don't get it now, there's nothing I can tell you legally um, <laughs> that um, I can tell you in this current moment. So, uh, but they got it, you know. Nice. You get like, a, I think it's a minute for the reading portion. So you just kind of drill it through. And just, to prepare? Mm -hmm, mm. Um, in the moment. Same thing for sight singing, which they did better on. Um, 
like they had a better start it was like all right one two ready go and they started singing but with the rhythm one it was just silence for a good 10 seconds i'm like all right let's try again yeah let's try again run it back you guys got this someone needs to lead it all Um, right so your experience now as a teacher mm -hmm. sending students through mpa how was your experience as a student going through MPA yourself. Do you have any, do you have a particularly memorable MPA? Cause isn't it every year? It's every year. Yeah. yeah. So did you have a particularly memorable one? Um, I think I honestly can't tell you any of the songs that we sang at MPA, <laughs> but the only thing I remember was the sight reading. Um, our teacher, he had us work in sections in high school. So um, every year I was the section leader. It was pretty just easy leading them um so i kind of was like a mini teacher in that moment um but also it's just easier to work with your peers instead of like trying to convince people 10 years younger than you to do something (laughs) that they may or may not want to do um so yeah nothing memorable i just remember that we would always go to lakeland um for state mpa Mm -hmm. and they still have it there every year and i just love not going to school for a whole day yeah and you know singing for people um but mpa has never been stressful on my end as a student but it's definitely like a hundred times stressful as a teacher because you have to like buy the bus um register the kids get the music teach the music like all of those factors that you you put that work into and then not to mention that the county is very whether it's intentional or not they're kind of competitive when it comes to stuff like that so like when you get a rating maybe your peers aren't like as supportive just because they're like oh so that's how your program is based on your rating you know Mm. um and like for a new teacher it's kind of scary because there's not a lot of um other new teachers in the field so um other than that, like, I still feel like I did a great job. It's just a matter of, like, convincing myself that we can only go up from here, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, pretty fun in general. I would definitely do it again. If I didn't do it this year, I would never do it. So I'm glad that, like, I brought these 30-something girls to MPA for the first time. And, like, hopefully um, in high school they want to keep doing it, Yeah. You know? So... That's great. That's yeah. sick. <laughs> but the stories as a teacher, oh my gosh. Yes, please. Get into some stories as a teacher. Okay, so how many years have you been a teacher now? This is my second year. I'm about to okay. finish that up. Um, so my first year was pretty crazy. You know, you go for four years in college mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, I know exactly what I want to do. And then middle school rocks you a new one. It's like, <laughs> it's like, wait, it's like that. <laughs> it's like Bruh. first day of school. <laughs> hey guys so uh you guys have any siblings like it's just so <laughs> bad it's so bad. <laughs> it's um so i can't really recall a lot of interesting stories just like some weird quotes but like this week alone um a kid asked me like what's the most out-of-pocket thing a student has told you and i, I couldn't tell them anything because i'm like i don't even know Like, it it just all happens all at once. You don't even realize what stories. But I do remember this one. Um, On Wednesday, there was just a kid. I don't even know what possessed them to ask this question. And I don't know if anyone has ever received this question before. But they were like, Mr. West, do you eat booty? (laughs) I was like... I didn't even know. I was just What like, do you even say to that? I don't even middle know. Middle schooler. I just asked, like, why would you ask me that? Like, there's, I don't even know what to, <laughs> Did how, <laughs> what provoked you? I feel like the only, me. the only good response in that, in that, in that moment <laughs> is to just do a 360. Just turn yeah, just, 100 all the way around. Mm-hmm. Can we start over? <laughs> it's like, let's try again. Let's how just... was your day? <laughs> like... I was. I don't even know. I think I was chatting with another student about some some missing work because this is our last week before um, spring break. Like mm-hmm. it just started this week. Um, so I was working with some kid on math, and just randomly, Mister West. And I was like, "Yes, do you eat booty?" <laughs> Boom! I was. Like, oh my god. <laughs> never nothing in college prepared me for that day there is not a single (laughs) not a a single class that prepares you for the out-of-pocket questions that 
Children will ask you. <sighs> so that that is by far the most out of pocket thing I've heard. <laughs> um, and like you know, you get your typical like you know they're just calling each other names and stuff like that. This it's only so much you can do. But like direct questions towards me, I've never had anything like that before in my life so um that's a that's a good one for sure that's a memorable one for sure yeah but yeah overall i think i would continue the profession i know a lot of people um especially now like there's just a huge teacher shortage yeah um but i know that it's just a lot of growth in terms of like how to be a good leader and how to connect with somebody on a not just as a musical level like i don't necessarily want them to be the best singers in the world um i just want them to be able to communicate how they feel in a given moment and like how to communicate um what they would like to do to adults i think that's also a big deal Mm. um like at my school there's only two people including myself that are in their 20s so for them to have anybody that relates with them um it's just really it's hard to come by yeah um especially like when the teachers are tired we're burnt out all the time especially at this time when there's testing and everything Mm -hmm. so um just to make it fun i have an easy profession compared to my other teachers um because i i get to make the curriculum i get to um yeah you have a lot of creativity and uh a lot of say of, of what you do as opposed to probably some other teachers like math or science where there's a very strict curriculum. Yeah. And like middle school music isn't easy just because all they write about is like the moon and <laughs> how it feels to be on the boat and uh, probably <laughs> autumn. But, you know, it's fun to do that research and to know your kids well enough to know what they can and can't necessarily do. Mm-hmm. Um and just have a good time, you know. Concerts are my finals, so it's good. It's good to have that live aspect in my life. As yeah, well. that's a fun final. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you have to do a final, you'd want to do something like that. That plane falling out of the sky. Is that Boeing? Okay, so two years now into middle school. Mm-hmm. How do you think middle school has changed? from when we were in middle school <laughs> to now i can't really i can't really speak on that cuz i went to <laughs> i didn't skip middle school completely no um i went to a um like a middle school that only it was like a really famous choir mm-hmm. and they focused more on that and so it was kind of like a private school mm. and like my my situation was that instead of going to like regular classes which i did um i would go on tour as well so I would travel across the country. I even went to South Korea and France wow. just to like do that. So like my middle school experience doesn't exist compared to what I see now. Um, but I will say what threw me for a loop is just the overall respect for adults. Not even for me. I understand. I'm a goofy dude. I get that. <laughs> but like in general... Maybe it's just my school, but there's just a lot of, like, I don't care what you say because my parents told me this, you know? Mm. Um, And sometimes it works out, but most of the time it's just, like, you're failing your classes, dog. Like, I don't know what your parents told you, but you kind of need to step up your game a little bit. Um, And so, I like, I don't know. They're just... They don't have like the drive to do school as much. Mm. I feel like with with us, we had more of a focus of I know exactly at least what's going to be my future for the next four, like seven years. You know, if I go to college, cool. That's another four years, right? Mm. But um, yeah, they just they don't see the benefits of going through school and like trying your best and turning in the work on time and stuff like that. And I'm sure like like a regular struggle in general. Like I know I turned in work super late all the time. Oh yeah. But at least I did it, you know. Yeah. So okay, so interesting. So it seems like kids just these days just don't care about school. Not at all. Interesting. I mean, I definitely didn't really care about school when I was in middle school, but it's not like I could avoid it. 
Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I don't care, but I still got to be here every single day anyway. Yeah. Uh, It's just, I can see how that's difficult, especially nowadays with kids having so much access to information on the internet and how it's very popular right now to say you don't need school. You don't need education. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to go to college to get a good job. You need, you don't need this. You could just learn everything yourself on YouTube or on Google or whatever. And yeah, very interesting how it's, or it's going to be very interesting for you and your colleagues to see how education continues, especially now with like stuff like artificial intelligence coming in where Mm -hmm. you can just literally ask chat GPT or like (laughs) to do all your homework for you yeah like you don't need to look up stuff anymore and then now you can even skip google and be like hey chat gpt what is this right they tell me about this and i'll just tell you skip the whole googling part <laughs> yeah there i think i saw this meme um that a teacher sent on like i know i'm getting old because i'm looking at facebook but um <laughs> there was like this post and he was like yeah my student really sent me this and it was a forwarded message like email of someone doing their work so it was like here's my work and then it's just the forwarded email <laughs> of client. Bruh. Like, it was so bad. <laughs> I'm like, you don't even have the effort to craft your own email. Um, but yeah, another thing is like phones too. Like, mm. they are addicted. I I took their phones for MPA and because um, it's required of me to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, you guys will get them back. You'll get them back. It's in a box. Like, whatever. Just make sure you turn them off. And then when we got on the bus, they didn't even care about me announcing the rating. They were just like, can we get our phones back? can we get our phones back um so some people like and maybe it's a teacher thing maybe it's a parent thing but like we resort to our phones so quickly um especially like when we have a lot of downtime Mm -hmm. um and i think that's probably why they you know they they see people who they look up to online and then they also have the time to do that instead of just being like all right let's just keep our phone for the day like at home and then um focus on one thing for a good couple of hours and then come back and then you can have the free time you know um but i don't i don't know how to fix that solution i know the government was like yo we're gonna ban tiktok which look i I wouldn't be mad if they did that honestly (laughs) i I wouldn't be mad i don't use tiktok (laughs) and if it disappeared i wouldn't wouldn't really care but Mm -hmm. i think it has like a lot of great things socially but at the same time that's all they care about Mm -hmm. you know it's just to get those views even though half of them only have like two followers so (laughs) excuse me i think that there should be like some form of limitations especially like on the younger side of social media but you know at the same time there's so much that you can benefit from from the internet that I would hate for them to not have the accessibility to that resource. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I got on phones and stuff like that. But double edged sword. Yeah. But then plus they take a lot of selfies on my phone, which <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are there I leave my phone on the piano and then I go through my phones or go through my photos and it's just like, oh, there's a selfie. I gotta delete that. Oh. Goodbye. No, it's so bad. I'm like, who stole my phone? So I should probably just lock my camera. Yeah. Is there a way to do that? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I can't imagine just going there. Be like, why are there children on my phone? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> why are there children on my phone? It's like, oh my god, and they take like the weirdest photos of, like, with their phones of me, and so I'll just be like, I- I'm, I'm entertain it sometimes i'll just like do like some weird face or something but um and like it's good if you want to record like a very funny moment Mm -hmm. um but it's just hard to get them off their phones and put them in their backpack you know so phones yeah oh yeah (laughs) did you play any uh video games were you a gamer at all destiny 2 that's it (laughs) it's so i've been playing i played destiny when i was um in high school Mm -hmm. And then Destiny 2 came out, I think, around, like, my first year of college. And I've just been playing it ever since. I don't play it as much because I have a job and, like, I don't get to see the sun. But uh, (laughs) it's so fun. Um, There's still, like, a lot of backlash because, like, sometimes the content that Bungie makes isn't conducive to, like, what we want. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I'm not like one of those like, oh, let's just boycott Bungie, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll just play it until they stop making content. I'm like a one one game at a time kind of person. Oh, so, interesting. Um, that and Super Smash Brothers. I'll mm. ice climbers every day. Ice, ice climbers <laughs> every day. <laughs> Most I play <laughs> all the unconventional characters. Like I love ICs, man. I've been playing them since like Melee. Um, and I just love you know the bond that they have with beating people up that's just together <laughs> yeah blood is water at this point and it's, they're both thick um but yeah i don't yeah i don't normally game a lot i've been playing a lot of music though um so like i play keys uh-huh. um and i started learning bass um uh, two years ago oh nice it's fun i don't i don't focus on it as much <laughs> <laughs> speaking of bass <laughs> speaking of bass um I just, you know, just enough to be functional and like my next goal would be to learn drums Mm -hmm. Um, just because like then I have like the whole enchilada. Yeah. Um, But keys is where I really love. It's like my best friend in the moment. Um, I get to be as creative melodically, be as creative harmonically, um, you know, rooster, everything up. Oh, all right. Drum lesson right now. All right. Here we go. Start start playing. Go for it. Let's see, we got the, we got the. All right, here, Jacob, you take this. Do, do, do. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Doing the Chang Hoff pod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we sipping on some coffee. Nathan sipping on some tea. What type oolong tea? Yeah, you can't see me. Okay, should we? Because I'm John Cena. Should we go ahead and go to the bonus? Maybe. Maybe we just go to the bonus and start making a song. All right, hand the hand the mic anything back else? to anything else you want to say to the the masses? Oh yeah, um, pickles are delicious. Ooh, uh, what are your favorite type of pickles? Brand Mount Olive. Mount Olive. Yeah. And how do you like them? Uh, slices, chips. Oh, I think if I I do like the the spears, mm-hmm. um, but I love a good pickle chip on like any sandwich. Mm. I always. Like the the crinkle cut, yeah, I would, yeah, I would say that, but not the sweet pickles. That is just foul. I don't know who <laughs> invented that. It's the same thing as like crunchy peanut butter. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Oh, see, uh, I'm a crunchy peanut butter lover. I oh, love crunchy peanut butter. I don't even like peanut butter. I just think that if it's a butter, it shouldn't be crunchy. You know, but like, <laughs> that's all. Hey, hey, fair point. Fair point. <laughs> like I feel like I I've already lost the battle about peanut butter. I get it. You know, it's a great spread. But there is no reason why there should be nuts in the butter. It makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> and, and shout out to Nutty Butter. Butter? Nutter Butter? Nutter Butter. Yeah, there it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have been trying peanuts. Because um, I'm used. i still like a huge hater of the peanut family. but And us affiliates. Um, <laughs> affiliates. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, um, thank you for coming. Thank you for yeah. being part of the episode and uh telling us some great stories yeah being a part and uh doing your drums and talking about photography yeah this has been a great episode if you guys want to go and watch the bonus episode it's going to be on patreon a link right here i think it's patreon.com slash chang hoff i don't know all of what we're going to do but we're definitely going to freestyle and maybe make a song and uh jacob has a special saint patrick's day surprise i do for the bonus so if you guys want to see all of that go tune in on the patreon it's going to be a lot of fun that's where like we really get crazy we get wild and it's going to be a lot of fun and now we have nathan here so it's going to be 10 times as as special so i'd really appreciate it if you guys checked it out thank you guys so much for watching and listening everywhere you watch and listen to podcasts and uh yeah that was it amazing stuff thank you and we're gonna keep going for the bonus let's go bongus Oh. Bonus! Yeah! 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 Uh.